Hey guys, it's Mara, and today I want to talk to you about the principle behind urine pregnancy tests or serum pregnancy tests because both urine and serum can be ran on these type of tests. So this is the test we use in the lab. Um, this is the package insert that comes with it. It's called OSOM um, HCG Combo Test by Seg Segusi Diagnostics. Say goosey, I don't know how you say that. Um, and this is what the little package looks like. And we'll just rip this open. It comes with the pipette to add the sample, either the serum or the urine, and then it comes with the cartridge. So I want to read a little bit about how to actually perform the test first. So first you're going to use the bowl, which let me get that out. Of course, you'll have gloves on, you'll have your identifier, or if you're running it on yourself, you'll know it's you. Um, but here's the little bulb, and what you do is you draw up the specimen to this little line here. And I think it said it's about 135 microliters, so you really don't need much urine at all to run it. Um, and here is the cartridge. So what you do, S is for sample, T is for test, and C is for control. So you will draw up your specimen with this pipette to the line, and then, laying this flat, we'll drop it into the sample and it will migrate. And then you will at least have a line with the control. There should be a black line there. If there's not, definitely repeat it with a different cartridge. There's something wrong. That's your, in your internal control and you need that line. Um, and then if the test is positive, you will also have a line on the test line. So, um, and for urine, you would set your timer for three minutes and then look at your result at three minutes. For serum, you will wait five minutes. So it takes a little bit longer to migrate. Um, and also with the urine, you want to try to get the first morning urine. Um, that doesn't always happen when they come in through the ER or wherever you are and you want to do a pregnancy test. But those that, that urine is usually the most concentrated and you're more likely to get a positive if you are pregnant. So. Let me just read this and I'll explain a little bit because it does use some um, more advanced terminology. But the principle of the test is it is a solid phase sandwich format immunochromatographic assay. So basically what that means, sandwich format is you're binding um, the conjugate, your antibodies together and then it makes a little sandwich. You just like they stick together and that's how you get your line. So, um, this is for the qualitative detection of HCG. So, we'll tell you how much your HCG is. That would be a different test, and a lot of times we do that to confirm. Uh, it's also called a beta HCG when it um, runs on a chemistry analyzer, and that will give you a number. So, this is just the qualitative. Yes or no, not a number, which is quantitative. Okay. So it says urine or serum is added to the sample well. That's where this little S is. And of the test device using the pipette provided, that's this little guy, um, the sample migrates through reaction pads where HCG is present in the sample. So this is like the little reaction pad area. So if HCG is in the blood or serum, it binds to a monoclonal anti-HCG dye conjugate. So, you have HCG, it's going to buy to the anti-HCG. That's just like the antibody. So, HCG, anti-HCG, it'll buy. Then, the sample migrates. So, it'll start picking it up and it'll start moving along like, think of like a little conveyor belt. Um, and then, it migrates across the membrane towards the result window, which is here. Um, where the labeled HCG complex, so that would be your HCG if you have it in your conjugate labeled together, um, is captured at a test line region um, containing immobilized rabbit anti-HCG. So it does use rabbit anti-HCG um, at the test line to bind to the conjugate of anti and uh, HCG if it's in your serum or urine. Okay, so let's 
see. The label HCG complex is captured in test line region containing immobilized rabbit anti HCG. Um, then Okay. Excess conjugate, so that's the stuff that was in the cartridge already that doesn't bind will flow past the test region and be captured at the control line. So I have seen um, urine tests where you can have a very, very strong positive and so the test line will be really dark and then the control line will actually be a little bit lighter because so much of it was bound that there wasn't a lot of leftovers to go all the way to the control line because you're really extra pregnant. Um, so let's see. It'll flow past and we capture the control line. Control line just binds the anti, the dye that's in the cartridge. So as long as everything works out, then you'll have a control line because that's already in the cartridge. But the test line just binds the complex. So the test line is just the two together. The other one is what you started with, the dye, the, the uh, conjugate, with or without HCG bound to it from your blood or serum. Okay, so if you get two test lines, like I said earlier, if you get two test lines, that's a positive. If you just get one test line, that's a negative on the test lines on the control. I mean the test line. The line is on the control. Now, say you got a test line and no control line, that's an invalid test. That is, you always need that control line. You need at least one line. It needs to be at the seat. Okay. Now, let's go into a little extra information. Okay, so there are some limitations to this type of testing, this little cartridge guy. Um, so, it says this assay is compatible with detecting only whole molecule intact HCG which is the predominant form of HCG in early pregnancy. You cannot detect the presence of HCG fragments or free subunits, which apparently you get more free subunits um, of HCG in, like, as the pregnancy goes on. Um, let's see. It says after the first trimester. So, um, blah, blah, blah. And they say then you can do different kinds of testing, like your beta HCG, your quantitative number. That would be a better test than just this urine serum pregnancy test. Hmm. What else? Okay, so it also says interfering substances may falsely depress or falsely elevate results. These interfering substances may cause false results over the entire range of the assay, not just at low levels, and may indicate the presence of HCG when there is not. Um, as with any immunochemical reaction, unknown interferences from medications or endogenous substances may affect results. So I have heard of women, uh, postmenopausal women, actually um, having a pregnancy test for whatever reason. If they're going into surgery, they have to check most of the time. Um, usually if they're premenopausal, but sometimes post, it just happens, they order it. And I've seen women have positive pregnancy tests who are not pregnant. Um, this can be for a variety of reasons. I've heard that your brain can actually produce beta. Um, so sometimes different parts of your body when you get older will start producing HCG in very low levels. It can also be indicative of certain kind of cancers. If you've heard of guys um, taking a pregnancy test for something funny um, and actually end up positive, it can be um, indicative of testicular cancer because um, you can have beta HCG producing tumors, and that's why your HCG would be positive. It's actually a tumor. It's not a baby. Um, and there are a few drugs they have listed that can, um, at different um, concentrations, it says that will not affect. Um, so acetaminophen at 20 milligrams per deciliter, which is pretty high to be in your urine or serum, um, that it would not affect. Now, the if you want to know about the um, what's the word I'm looking for specificity, specificity and sensitivity of these tests, um, it looks like it's greater than 99% using either urine or serum. 
Um, so it has in these, so 634 individuals were evaluated with this test um, and they were seeking confirmation for pregnancy. So the, the two assays, so both urine and serum, agreed on 629 out of 634 samples. So that's over 99% apparently. So they had 196 that were positive um, on the HCG combo test, that's this guy. And then they compared them with other methods and 196 were positive there also. So in the negatives were 435. The other testing they used to confirm was also 435. So they didn't mess up on any of those. Um, and then it looks like down here on the serum, they only had one that the HCG called positive and another test, me test method called negative. So I have seen um, HCGs when we confirmed with a beta of about uh, seven or eight show up. So it can detect pretty low levels. Now this chart, you guys can see this. This has a serum, this is the urine. Now they're saying 80% chance basically that a serum will detect the beta levels of 2.5. So if you let it run more than three minutes, which you're not supposed to do, or five minutes for serum, actually be five minutes for serum. Um, then you can sometimes see a line show up, but you're technically supposed to read it at five minutes. So they're saying the expect expected sensitivity of serum samples at a read time of five minutes is 10. So with this graph, you can see at five or at 10, it goes up all the way to 100. So at 10, that's 10, um, what's the unit? milli uh, or micro IUs per milliliter. That's just the units. So for serum, but with urine, they're saying it takes 20 micro international units per milliliter. Um, and what else? So the interfering substance, I already talked about that. And they're saying the addition of luteinizing hormones, these are all different hormones, luteinizing hormone. Uh, FSH or follicle stimulating hormone or TSH um, in concentrations of 300, 1,000, and 1,000. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave them below. I'll link in some of my other lab videos if you guys are interested in me explaining a few things. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and ask me and I will try to answer them. I'm usually pretty quick at replying back. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.